Perfect. Thank you. Um, so we want to get started with our welcome um, and introductions. Um, we can do roll call for. We can. So carry on if you want to do roll call for us. Absolutely. Starting with Shayla Bonner. Gilbert Salinas. Uh, here. Patrice Gilbury. Here. Alberto Garibay. Here. Shannon Ortland. Matthew Malone. We have four members present. Quorum is established. Thank you. And then we'll pass it over to the folks on Zoom. Uh, we can start with Chris. Good afternoon, everyone. Chris James with the W. Haywood Burns Institute. Miss uh, Christina. Hey everybody, this is Christina Jackson with ORJ. Jill. Hi, this is Jill Ray with uh, Supervisor Candace Anderson's office. And I'm a I'm a butcher your name, and I'm so sorry, <laughs> Gariana. Shayla, that was perfect. Hi, I'm Gariana Youngblood, and I'm with the ORJ. Thank you again, um, everybody, for joining. I know we haven't met in a while, um, so we'll, we'll definitely. Actually, it's my first time. It's my first in <laughs> person. Data subcommittee. Yeah. In person. Big things popping, y'all. Um, <laughs> so we've done our introduction. We'll um, kick it over to announcements. Does anybody have any announcements at this time? The only announcement that I'd like to share is that we're actually in the process of building out what we're calling our restorative justice initiative. This is our Measure X uh, funded project, and we've recently hired on Brain Community Development and Bright Research Group, um, who will soon be leading an effort to launch a needs assessment and also engage the community through a variety of um, community workshops. And the overall objective is for us to identify where restorative justice practices or restorative practices, approaches, principles, and programming currently exist, where there's a gap, um, and potentially where uh, those, um, uh, those approaches can be enhanced. And so we'll also be conducting a series of informational interviews with some major, or, or I would say important key stakeholders. Um, we'll be reaching out to the sheriff's office. We'll be reaching out to the DA's office, community organizations that are doing some of uh, the work uh, locally and also um, office of ed and um, reaching out to folks at the district levels as well for Mount Diablo Unified, Antioch Unified and um, uh, West Contra Costa Unified. So we want to get a full breadth of understanding of where RJ is happening uh, across our various systems as well as locally. Um, we'll, we will hear a presentation of an overview of that project um, actually at the next diversion subcommittee meeting. We feel like that's a really great nexus to gather some feedback and also be informed of where the sentiments are, at least from the our job subcommittee uh, of um, other alternatives or diversionary restorative justice related approaches that could um, better impact our justice involved and justice impact to potentially prevent further mm -hmm. engagement in the justice system. So more to come on that, but uh, we look forward to engaging the community as much as possible on that effort. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I see we had someone else join us. Addie, you want to introduce yourself? Adi Olvera, I'm a Concord resident and member of Concord Communities Alliance. This is my first time here and I just wanted to see the meetings process. Thank you, thank you for joining. Um, we're just on the part where we're um, opening up for any announcements. Are there any other announcements at this time? Hearing and seeing none. So we'll move over to our public comment. Um, this part of the agenda is for anyone to um, bring forth any public comment on items under this, under the jurisdiction of the R job and not on this agenda. Um, so I'll open up for public comment. Right, again, hearing and seeing none. 
So we just breezing right through. Okay, so <laughs> next is our approval of the record of actions from the July 20th. Oh, 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 there we go. <laughs> from the July 28th. Wow, 2020. Is that right? 2022? I believe so. No, I don't think that's the last meeting that we had, though. No, I'm seeing this. Now that I'm seeing this, I don't. Yeah, we may have to go back um, and check on this. So if, if it's Patrice, okay. Patrice, that is the last one that, that was held. That was meeting. Then that was the last meeting, y'all. Wow. Yeah, that's what I was told when I got it. July 28th. Sent over to the, this committee. Over it's been a while. Whole, over a whole year. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, well. Fast. I know, right? Jeez. <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, approval of the record of action for the July 28th, 2022. That is the committee meeting. Anybody want to make a motion? Or I'll make a motion. Over. Okay. Yeah, and I'll second it. And can we get a roll call vote? Absolutely. Patrice Guillory? Yes. Gilbert Salinas? Yes. Shayla Bonner? Shayla? Yeah, I'm sorry. And Alberto Garibay. Yes. And just and to clarify, oh, sorry, Shayla. I just wanted to clarify who motioned. Gilbert. Okay, thank you. Motion carries. I guess I probably should have opened it up for public comment uh, before taking that vote. Uh, but is there any public comment um, from others? Hearing and seeing that. Okay, so we'll get into um, the big part of our agenda today, which is to discuss and review the Contra Costa Sheriff's uh, quarterly report, which is attachment two. I'm not sure if folks already had the, the chance to review it um, or if we should just go through it. Um, but I think Chris may have some updates from us from um, the community engagement and funding committee. Yes. Yeah. And then I know Patrice has some um, some notes that she's taken from the actual um, board of supervisor meeting. So should we review everything or should we, if folks already had a chance, I don't want to like take up too much time and go over everything. But if folks have already taken a chance to look at it, we can hop into to updates or to hear back the feedback from the other group. So I'll pass it to you, Chris. Yeah, so basically, um, we all know that this, uh, that the RJTF originally intended for, um, you know, civilian oversight of the sheriff. Um, there was, um, uh, a lack of clarity on whether or not that was a legally viable um, end to pursue. Um, that clarity came uh, in the form of uh, legislation uh, within the last couple of years, uh, which caused this body to then uh, seek to reinstate that original recommendation from the Racial Justice Task Force. Um, and uh, the board decided um, you know, against sort of installing that level of oversight and then said, instead, um, you know, asked the sheriff to to produce uh, what they call a, a quarterly oversight report, right, with some data in it. Um, so as to give the board, at least, uh, and anyone who's attending the board's meetings um, to to see the report or also any, any member of the public who, uh, you know, who can get access to um, the board's agendas online, uh, you know, access to this, uh, to this report on a quarterly basis. Um, and because of that, um, and in light of what all has been presented uh, in those reports, 
um, the community engagement and funding subcommittee as, you know, for a few months there, the only subcommittee that had been meeting um, took, took up uh, the matter of sort of reviewing um, this document and um, sussing out whether or not um, there was a need for more information um, and had some some recommendations about uh, additional asks. I would just say uh, we know that data writ large uh, has been a you know a major part of the recommendations that this body is meant to implement and B has also been you know one of the major challenges that this body has encountered. Um, and so if uh, the board is directing, the sheriff's office to produce a report like this, um, then there may be some potential to get some of the data that we have been lacking uh, or that we've asked for in other spaces uh, and haven't been able to receive for one reason or another. Um, and so that led to, um, you know, a, a number of potential uh, items to to ask for um, that the CEF came up with. And I did my best to, to uh, try to uh, sort of capture and record um, and put here for uh, a potential draft of some language that would go to the R job for finalization before being voted on and uh, approved or not, um, you know, to send directly to the board uh, as part of what should be included uh, in this report, um, you know, going forward. So, um I think that that's that should be the next attachment, um, and it just has a couple of uh, a couple of items that the CEF at least uh, thought were missing uh, that should be included. Uh, but because this is the data subcommittee, um, you know, and that would really fall under you all's purview, uh, rather than having the CEF get back together to kind of move this forward, uh, I would love to a have the uh, analysis and insight. Uh, of you guys in terms of, you know, what you think may be missing uh, from this report, uh, if anything, and then B, um, you know, what to ask for uh, and how to sort of word that request before it goes again to the full body to to be voted on. So, um, you know, hopefully everyone got a chance to, to review it. Um, you know, there were, I mean, I think, I think it's pretty clear if you look at uh, just the draft and what it's asking for, uh, you know, that there are some pertinent pieces of information, at least for the purposes of this group, uh, that can't be found in this report. Um, and that may be helpful uh, to us and in, in the work that we're trying to do. Um, okay, and it looks like so. What um, the group had came up with was population numbers by race, um, ethnicity, um, top five underlying offenses leading to bookings, traffic stops by race and ethnicity, civilian complaints, um, and cases and charges dismissed. That's for me because I did look through everything. Um, Chris, when it came to when it comes to traffic stops, are we talking about traffic stops that led to infractions or just trying to see exactly what is meant by traffic stops? Yeah, I think I mean so that was because those were things that were coming from the CEF and they don't necessarily have the lens that you all have. I think regardless of what they meant, right? If you uh, assess that particular aspect of the request and think it needs to either be removed or it needs to be revised or even refined, right? Uh, to something that's uh, a little bit more specific than just saying traffic stops writ large. Um, I think that is all fine and appropriate. Um, Shayla, Jill had her hand raised. All right, go ahead, Jill. I figured it out. I was having a hard time finding the recommendations, but then I just slowed down and I saw that I found them. <laughs> yeah, the only question I have now I think about it, does um now does the sheriff office Gary, have um 
have a traffic unit? Like a dedicated traffic unit just for like street violations? No. Okay. Okay. So I know that when this um, presentation was done on the was that July 18th, when the sheriff did his, his um, presentation, there were a couple of other comments, both from supervisors and public comment about additional data points. And I'll just raise them up and forgive me if I captured any of it wrong, but, and then I'll also say, go see the video. <laughs> it was it was a quite interesting uh, meeting, but I did hear that, and maybe that's what this means also about population numbers by race or ethnicity. And you have in parentheses to be displayed for comparison with data showing race, racial demographic data of jail population. I'm, I'm guessing this is in reference to uh, the breakdown of those who are booked by race and ethnicity? That's right. Okay, so it's bookings, demographic information. Okay, so that was also something that Supervisor Joya requested, racial demographics of those currently incarcerated. Um, and the sheriff mentioned that he does provide that or had at least provided that to our job. So as you all know, we did have for a, a period of time um, reports from the sheriff's office from probation as well as Office of Ed that included some of these um, breakdowns. Um, I heard of an ethnic break, race and ethnicity breakdown of pretrial versus post-conviction. I also heard race and ethnic breakdown of staff, uh, so sheriff staff those who are sworn versus those who are non-sworn. Supervisor Burgess wanted demographic breakdown of victims of crime. And then from public comment, I heard data on staff that are on administrative leave. I'd like to know staffing vacancies. Someone mentioned about number of welfare checks. Disabilities breakdown. I don't know. I can't. I couldn't recall what the disabilities breakdown was. It, it, which which group? Which population? Whether it's. I'm I'm assuming those who are incarcerated. Length of I guess average length of time of detainees. In traffic violations and racial breakdowns of those violations. And then it was also raised that um, like to see trends. Oh, as Joy mentioned, like to see trends over multiple years, policy trainings, activities. That, oh, I, I I assume okay. I think this was in regards to there was a comment lifted up about um, fitness evaluation by a member of the public, and I believe the sheriff uh, mentioned what. Uh, sort of the hiring practice is there and what sort of evaluations go on for folks who are, are being hired on as deputies. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess there's a, a question of what, what information or data could be shown about that. Um, Sheriff also mentioned that body cams and vehicle cams will be installed fairly soon. And that's all I think I captured. I don't know if any if anyone else had heard some of these things um, during the meeting. Now I think those all sound right um, more than I captured um, myself because I think some of those. Uh, there's a question about like the prioritization of, um, as well as I think the um, the 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 practicality of um, requesting them, uh, or at least having the request filled. Um, so trying to stick with, um, you know, some of the some of the most impactful pieces of information. Uh, it's not that we need to limit in some arbitrary way, uh, how many pieces of data we're asking for. I wouldn't advocate for that. Um, 
but uh, wanting to be realistic. Um, with that being, with that all in mind, though, I mean, again, this is you know the kind of uh, agenda item or the kind of sort of subject matter that this subcommittee is geared toward. So I think the the questions are about like between, and I wish we could we could get all of that on one screen in front of you guys uh, so that you could see it all as opposed to trying to commit some of it to memory. Um, and I'm happy to accommodate in some way if, you know, uh, if we can do that shortly. Um, but I think the question becomes, how do we uh, prioritize uh, the many things that were discussed and figure out, you know, what needs to move forward and, you know, a request that the R job would, would vote on. That sounds good. And I think, um, again, like what what data is readily accessible? Like you said, there's no traffic unit. So that information, I'm not sure how um, easy it will be to get. But... Well, when you reference a traffic unit, though, you're talking about a unit that's typically not responding to calls for service. All they do is track traffic enforcement. Mm -hmm. So there is traffic stops obviously being conducted. Right. right? And if you want to track the... Um, the race or ethnicity of our traffic stops, you'd probably have to refer to the RIPA, the Racial Identity Profiling Act, because all our traffic stops are, are now required to uh, input data upon completion of that traffic stop. What was your perceived, uh, what was your perception of the race of the person driving the vehicle? And then what was the final outcome at the end of that traffic stop? What was you, that called yeah. RIPA, the Racial Identity uh, Identification uh, Profiling Act. Yeah, and I think Melissa mentioned that to us Thank before um, sometime last year. She did mention about RIPA uh, data and information. And I, I don't know who collects that information mm -hmm. um, and whether we have real-time access to it or not, or how do we hate it? I have to find out. That's good to know. So I think... These are all really good, um, really good data points. Um, I think it might be best if we do have everything on one screen. Chris, so if you can help with that, that'd be great. Um, and then, then we can just go through this and see which ones we want to prioritize, um, which ones make sense, and which ones um, we want to put forth for a recommendation. Uh, working on it. I'm gonna mute myself, but I'm, I'm <laughs> I was gonna ask, do you have a share screen capability? Yes, but I don't have the uh, I mean, unless unless you're gonna call it out and I'm gonna type them, um, then it won't be won't be that helpful. Um, I don't know if it if it would be possible to uh, to enter them into a chat that could be copied and then they could all be put on, um, say an, a live screen that already has attachment three on it. Um, and that way we could talk about it. That might be, you know, quicker and easier. Again, Patrice, mm -hmm. chime in if you, if I, Broke any of these wrong. Oh. Um, <laughs> so, okay. at least from the Board of Supervisors meeting, uh, racial demographics of currently incarcerated. We have, well, see here on the screen, it says population numbers by race and, race and ethnicity to be displayed for comparison with data showing racial demographics data okay. of the jail population. Okay, so, because so in here, it's already bookings by race. Mm -hmm. So, so are they referencing bookings by race or current jail population? I don't think this. Count? So, I, so guess I don't know if it's it, referencing people that are freshly being booked off the street, and you know, daily things change, and right, sure. I don't know what the daily down is. So, what's in the report now is total numbers, total number of bookings by race for that specific quarter. 
that's on page nine of the packet here. Yeah. yeah. So what we don't have, I think, in here is race and ethnicity by jail population. So would that be, I mean, but what would be the difference here compared to bookings information? Um, Unless you're doing it per facility? Temporary um, stays versus long-term stays, people on trial, it could be a little bit different. So people could be booked and then released, right? Mm -hmm. Or you could have people that are doing um, their their time in county jail after being sentenced. So it'd be a little bit different. I don't know how much, but. but at least total number of bookings per race is, is at least giving you an indication of what the racial breakdown is of those going in irrespective right, of how right. long they're going to be there, right? So how is what's here different from what is um, recommended here? Yeah, or I think, it, the, uh, yeah, the, the main point is, um, so let's say if you're looking at that page, um, ugh, trouble with my screen right now. If you're looking at that page, um, which is page uh, I think it should I, I don't even know what page it would be in the report. I think it looks like the third page of the report is total numbers of booking by bookings by race. Um mm -hmm. so you don't have a, a a baseline by which to compare this to in terms of like the overall population numbers within the county. Um, and I think that was the point of the request. If we were to ever get um, uh, jail population numbers, I think that same point would would stand, right? That it's important when we're, you know, talking about what percentage of bookings are uh, black or Asian or Hispanic that you you know um, relative to the overall population numbers, what that means, right? Is that an overrepresentation? Is it an underrepresentation? It is a is it about right in line, right? When we're talking about uh, racial equity and, and trying to, you know, look at that or determine that from a numeric standpoint, um, that's an important piece of information to have available. I'm, I'm sorry. So you're saying overall population numbers? Are you saying pop, pop like in comparison to race breakdown, breakdown in the county or yes. in the jails? In the county. The county. Gotcha. Okay. So you want a comparison point? Yes. A note of that and then so in terms just one question yeah. so in terms of the demographics so just as an example you have um let's say it's nine percent uh, of the population is african american in the county mm -hmm. and you have you know 31 percent bookings but let's say it's compared to uh, folks that are actually in jail is that the comparison you're trying to see, I, like per capita? I think so. I think so. Okay. So I think the 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 request is to at least include that alongside these these breakdowns here. Another thing you mentioned was pre versus post conviction. I forgot the last little bit that you said. Oh, it's the ethnic breakdown of pretrial versus post conviction. So that for the that's what a little bit of what you were saying earlier. Those who are um, at least awaiting trial that's in custody, the racial breakdown of those folks. The one they want. That's the that's the one that was lifted up by Supervisor Julia. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. 
then you also mentioned staff racial breakdown. Mm -hmm. And are we talking about all agencies or? So this would be just just um, just sheriff. sheriff. And then this is all sheriffs. Yeah. Or detention custody bureau, or they want the entire department. That part wasn't specified. It just says ethnic breakdown of staff, or that the note that I took ethnic breakdown of staff, sworn versus non sworn. I'm sorry to go back to the previous one. Uh, mm -hmm. They wanted to break down a pretrial versus those currently in trial. Post conviction. Post conviction. Mm -hmm. hmm. And then demographic breakdown of victims of crime. Mm -hmm. and staff which for that one demographic breakdown of victims of crime would the would the sheriff's office have that information or is that more DA um, technically I guess we would have it because most of our um, information cover sheets have that information okay um However, don't know whether we have the manpower that would come over all of that, all of that to mm -hmm. extract that information. So I don't know whether how feasible that would be and how long that would take. Mm -hmm. um, be probably difficult, but again, I don't know if we have uh, analysts currently assigned to that. Okay. Some of that information is protected too, right? Don't know to be on, quite honest. Is revealed that would be protected. For certain crimes, it might be. Mm -hmm. Along with staff, um, staff and vacancies. Yeah, staff and vacancies to include number of staff that are on administrative leave. That came from so some of the so the rest kind of came from public comment. Um, so kind of to um, Chris's point, I'm not sure how much of these the the, the body will want to prioritize because mm -hmm. um, they kind of it's, it's a lot here. <laughs> yeah. And then for the disability breakdown. You said you wasn't sure if that was. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure. Um, or maybe there was a request of, because I also, gender and disability breakdown. Um, and I don't know at, at which point, if this is the current jail population, maybe, I'm guessing. And then average length of time of detainees, yeah. Big violations, which kind of just goes back to what the other group, done. yeah. Um, trans over multiple years. No, what is that? Yeah, uh, this was in this was in reference to. I would say scratch that because I don't recall exactly. The, what was the specific data point where he was wanting to see this uh, a trend over multiple years? Mm -hmm. I have noted underneath policies, trainings, activities. Um, can't even read my own writing here. Yeah, let me get back to you on that one. <laughs> And then fitness evaluation. Yeah. Was that public comment or that was public comment? Okay. 
<laughs> fitness for duty evaluations that have been done over the last 10 years is what I wrote. I mean, and someone's, I think someone mentioned that that's, that's not necessarily, I think what they were trying to get at was just what, what evaluations are in place to then qualify the, the individual to then become actual sheriff deputy. So whatever sort of, so that, that, that's through hiring basically. Through us it would be um, through um, hiring mm -hmm. and or um, they're, when they're in recruiting status in the academy. And that's all regulated by uh, post um, and the mandating testing requirements that you need to pass in order to be certified and complete the academy. And that was it that I wrote down. Did I miss anything? Oh, that's all I really have. There was one thing that I did write on my own, which is maybe a breakdown by gender. We had the gender and disability breakdown, but if we can get a gender breakdown. That's the, that's her list. Um, I personally crossed off the fitness evaluation. Um, just <laughs> I don't think it's something that we necessarily need to track, but I'm definitely you know just open up for discussion at this point of like what do we feel is necessary, um, and kind of like uh, prioritize people. Um, yeah. So I'll open it up to folks to chime in. What makes sense? Uh, what can we move forward? What are something that we should probably take off? I think of all the ones that have been raised in, in addition to the ones on the screen, what I find uh, that would be most helpful um, and revealing information, so to speak, would be the top five underlying offenses that lead to bookings, um, traffic stops by race and ethnicity. Um, I do like the, uh, the, you know, having more demographic information such as um, gender and disabilities to be sort of included in either that, um, I would guess in the booking information, total number of bookings by race, gender. Um, and though they may not have booking and for, at the time of booking, I'm not sure if they're able to assess and identify whether or not someone has a disability, but at the very least, the number of individuals with a qualifying disability that are current at that point in time currently incarcerated. Um, yeah, and those are the main ones that stand out to me. Thank you, Patrice. And Jill, I see your hand. I was just gonna state on the um, the qualifications or the background check or whatever that question was, it's a pretty comprehensive description on the sheriff's website on all of the different levels that they have to go through and what they have to pass to become a sheriff deputy. So I'm not sure that providing that information in a quarterly report is more helpful than what's already on the website. Just an FYI in case any of you haven't, haven't had a chance to look at it. I came over to my current position. Mm -hmm. I was the academy coordinator, so I can give you a lot of insight on any of the training that was provided at the academy. Okay. Well, thank you. Anybody else? I would agree, like, yeah, the population numbers, um, the gender breakdown. Um, Uh, maybe even the staff breakdown is something that I'd be interested in. Yeah. 
also the staff and vacancies, because I think that was something that folks have, other community um, leaders have brought up. It's like, um, we know like the, the sheriff's budget, you know, sometimes he asks for um, additional funding to fill vacancies. Um, so it'd be um, a good idea to see like, what's the number of staff and what's vacant. Um, that might be useful information as well. Yeah. Any other votes? And then I did have a question about civilian complaints, um, Chris. Was that, um, I guess, did they go into depth as to what they meant by civilian complaints? Um, is it, com you know, complaints in, like overall or complaints that may have moved forward? Or complaints related to race and ethnicity? Yeah, so I, I again, I, I, I don't recall directly um, at this point. Uh, I think Patrice is taking much better notes than I was taking that day. But I would say, um, you know, it is, you know, you you guys have like the the ball in your court in terms of defining or refining um, any of these. I will point out also, I think there there are there is something um, showing um, use of force uh, complaints, I believe, in the report. Um, so, like, if you look at that, let's see if I can find it really quickly. Um, so, it's use of force. I see use of force incidents reported to the state DOJ. Um, but outside of, oh, yeah, outside of that, uh, I don't see much in terms of uh complaints um and so you know the the question is um and it doesn't even have to be answered only here because you know you will have a chance to um you know to to submit this for a vote um and or revisions and then a vote um to the art to the full body um but the question is you know like do you feel like you have enough uh information as far as uh, those types of complaints, um, you know, in uh, an oversight report, as it is termed. I would be interested to know how many complaints um, have been received. Um, but I just don't know what what we would as um, as our job uh, what we could actually do. Um, well, internal well. affairs would have the numbers of complaints that came through official complaints that came through, not just kind of the informal type of complaint which would not be tracked because uh, it's not generated with a formal request to complain mm -hmm. to internal affairs. So you could probably get numbers from internal affairs. And it looks like, like that's in the report too, on page 32 of the packet, but page 26 of the report, there's internal, well, it's internal affairs initiated. investigation initiated. initiated. With Vastly different than submitted complaints that were unfounded Got it. or Got it. Didn't, weren't pursued any further and were resolved at a lower level probably. Got it, okay. Christina? Yeah, I just have a quick question. I don't know if it's already been discussed or if it's um, already been covered, so apologies if so, but has the topic of bookings by age come up at all as a point of interest? I'm thinking specifically around the Tay population. That's just something I'm personally interested in. So I was wondering if that came up in the subcommittees at all. I don't think so. I, I don't recall it, but I think it's a great catch. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know when we were, I can't believe it's been a year already. <laughs> but when we were meeting, we did have like the juvenile, the juvenile data and, and, you know, separated those two. But I think that is a good catch. That is something I will be interested in. 
and even further, so yes, including age breakdown, so we can capture that 18 to 25 group. But then I would also like to see in conjunction with this top five underlying offenses um, that lead to bookings, if there's a way we could capture what's the top five for that TAY group as well. Because if there's some, you know, we've, I think we discussed this. I'm in so many meetings. I can't, they all start to run together. <laughs> but, oh, I think it was our JJCC, so our Juvenile Justice Coordinating Council Data and Services Committee. I happened to mention there, this is in your wheelhouse, the, uh, <laughs> the gun prevention yes, yes. coalition. Yes. And so if, if any of the top offenses that lead to bookings for young people happen to be, uh, you know, gun, uh, related to gun charges and things like that. Like that could be, uh, uh, you know, illuminating for for us. I would say in a number of different respects, for sure. I know that um, we're developing systems to track all that data. Mm -hmm. um, some of the violence uh, that happens across the county, specifically gun violence, and so I know that we're working on some of that. I can bring it back um, to Hisham. Hisham oversees the violence prevention work. Okay. Well, and I know that they're developing a steering committee that will start meeting in September. Okay. Um, for, for that work as well. I'm on that as well. So. Okay, cool. Any other thoughts? Um, we got a sense of what we want to move forward with um let's... Oh, no ushers i want to make sure we <laughs> we covered everything um, and you said this will go to the full body right that's right. Sure. So, you know, you can take some pressure off yourself because you'll have a chance to. Like, what, what, what we... to do this? I'm sorry. I was sweating. I'm like, did we cover everything? Did we yeah. capture everything? Yeah. I, I mean, I think you you guys have done a good job, but uh, you will. So this will be like a recommendation uh, because this the, this report goes to the board. Right. Um, and so it it is the board that you're requesting um, to uh instruct the sheriff to include these things you know um of course to the to the extent that there's the capacity to to do that and so on and so forth but to include these these items that you're asking for and so because of that um you will want the full body to vote on that you know formal recommendation or request to the board so that means at a full body meeting or and probably like within uh your uh your subcommittee report which you know will be due uh new chair uh at some point a couple of weeks before um you know we have that uh full body meeting like you could you could put this request in there for the consideration of the body uh at which point folks will look at it again right and there will be undoubtedly some level of discussion and back and forth and maybe some changes before uh, ultimately, there's a vote, uh, yay or nay, to to approve the uh, the request. And I see Addie has her hand up. I was just, I just wanted to wait for public comment, but I didn't want you to forget. So I put my hand up. Um, <laughs> you want me to just do it now? Yeah. Okay. Um, I I was at the meeting where they did this report and did public comment then, but two things that I didn't have opportunity to comment on because of you know your limited time or um on the uh, coroner's data um i kind of felt it was like just missing a lot of vital information that may not be useful to this committee per se but would to families um because there are families that i experience on a monthly or so forth basis that complain about the process of the coroner's office and the length of time it takes for families of color to receive their case, their coroner's reports case closed or incident report. And 
I'd like to see more data on the ethnicity of the cases that they have and how long it takes them to complete a case. Uh, again, I'm not thoroughly familiar with the coroner's reports process, so you might understand what I'm trying to get at here. Um, but um, there, I'm hoping that there's nothing to see in terms of differences of how um, cases, coroner cases are completed based on someone's race or the person's family's race um, or by, you know, I know that sometimes it gets complicated based on how they pass away, but um, race is something that I'm really interested in how long it takes for a coroner's report to get out to give family um, an opportunity to finally grieve um, and uh, their family members from death. Um, the other thing that I noticed is that um, one of the things that the sheriff is tasked for is uh, to follow this bill that I forget the name of, um, policies on the use of uh, uh, military equipment, such as drones, licensed fruit readers, anything that looks like a tank-like <laughs> equipment. And um, there really wasn't any data in this that kind of talked to me about how often to deploy drones, when, where, what are the races of the people that they're trying to use drones with, and other type of military-like use equipment based on this policy use um, updates they had to do last year, based on this bill, which I can't remember the name right now. So I would like to see more data on on the deployment of military-like um, tools that were used, um, how often and by and by the race of the person that they were used for, um, communities that they were used for, more particular in detail, the neighborhoods. Um, and and that are my only two feedbacks. Thank you. And forgive me for missing public comment. Are there any other public comments at this time? Hearing and seeing that. So we'll take this. Um, it will be included in my report, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> um, but we'll bring this to the full body um, to also have a discussion. Uh, since I think we're, it was only two subcommittees that actually talked about this. Um, the next agenda item is to discuss and update our job data subcommittee meeting schedule, which is attachment four, which is the last page. Yeah, and I, I, I can just give a, a sort of update, if you will. Um, Given that this is the first time that the data subcommittee has met in person, just wanted to check in with everyone to see whether or not these um, the remaining schedule um, for the rest of this year works for everyone. Um, does this location work, work for folks? You know, all of those logistical matters. Um, so that way we can make sure you have regular calendar invites and all the information you need um, to ensure that you're able to be here in person so we can have quorum. <laughs> I have them all on my calendar. Okay. You do. Uh, okay. Yeah. Location is perfect for me. Okay. Yeah. Um, and um, I don't see any issues um, aside from the 1228. That's kind of tricky because that's around right. holidays. Yeah. Um, yeah. We can't do much about that. Yeah, I know in the past, um, we've come down to it, especially if we're close to the holidays. Um, I think there's usually a discussion about whether or not to keep the meeting for the following week uh, or the following month, excuse me. So, um, but we did yeah, try to make note of that considering where, um, where the holidays are and where the meeting date is. So. Yeah. yeah. Other I think that throw my calendar. Okay. Same with me. I think all dates work except for that December date. Yeah, we have to talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have our meeting in Vegas <laughs> with you next. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would. I would just, if I may, add one more wrinkle to this 
Um, so on the as far as the December date, uh, it's very likely that that won't hold. Like it, you just, <laughs> like that's, you, you know, nobody's gonna want to be bothered. That's that's how that goes. Um, right. One of the questions we we you know do have, um, you know, sort of under a new regime, and given you know the the challenges that we face that led this uh, this particular subcommittee to go on a hiatus uh, is. You know, do you feel like um, you need to have a meeting on the calendar for every month uh, or do you feel like, um, you know, bi-monthly meetings would suffice? Um, I am here and available for every meeting. So, you know, it does not matter to me. Um, but I know that in the diversion subcommittee is something that they'll be talking about. Uh, I'm sorry if you guys can hear uh, stuff in the background, but specifically they will be talking about it because uh they have smaller groups that that get together and do certain pieces of work and then bring them back to the full subcommittee to look at and so um you know it's not always necessary that the full body gets together on a monthly basis and it makes it in fact a little difficult to schedule those smaller group meetings uh if everyone meets on a monthly basis uh, so that's been a that's been a recurring question, something that uh, the diversion chair wants to bring up again. Um, and and so because uh, it's come up in the diversion um, subcommittee, just wanted to bring it to you guys as well. October 26th, that will not be available. October 26th, okay. Yeah. All right. Our folks feeling. I mean, that is a good point. Like we were meeting monthly, um, uh, with really a whole lot to discuss, and until we um really start to get more data in to analyze, think about um strategically on how to move things forward. Um, yeah, we were just kind of coming in and going over the the uh, reports, but. Do folks feel like monthly or bi-monthly meetings would be better? I mean, even if we... Yeah. I mean, I, I just, it just depends on, you know, the situation and the issues that are emergent, you know, if this data, how soon this data needs to get collected and kind of operationalize those pieces. You would need more meetings or, or how... The time frame for even getting the data, it might not be next month. It might be the month after. Right. Or any push or priorities. <laughs> <laughs> I th I think the other thing too, and we talked about this in that initial was that the special either the special meeting or the first quarterly meeting. Actually, Shayla, you brought it up. You mentioned it that when when we were receiving data, at least from the agencies that I mentioned earlier. Um, Aside from there being this community data listening session, there really wasn't a whole lot more that we did with that. And it left us with the question of, okay, now what? Yeah. So I think though this subcommittee can continue to, to some degree receive information, that's one thing, but what sort of strategies are we looking to for action planning are we looking to employ based on the information that we do have? Because I, I have a feeling we're going to run into the same thing even with the sheriff's report, that even as more and more information comes out, um, it may eliminate some things, but then what's after that? And um, so we may need time to really think through some of those pieces, mm -hmm. I, I, I would say. I think also too now that um, so I'm not sure if you guys were present for the um, equity committee meeting where um, Chris was able to provide uh, our job update um, in lieu of the of us not making it um, for a full presentation on the previous PPC meeting, but um, uh, equity has now asked that our job does its report outs or updates or, or requests or what have you now to equity committee instead of PPC going forward. And I think it would be worth it for us to resurrect the conversation about what will be 
the resource to our, our job when it comes to these data requests, data collection, mm -hmm. to get the full picture across the entire continuum. Um, does that mean, we, does it mean we have to wait for the opening of that office, Office of Racial Equity or Social Justice, or could something be done in the meantime? Mm -hmm. So I think those are notable pieces that are worth raising again. Um, and this committee can be one that, again, strategizes and talk talk some of those pieces through. Great, yeah. yeah. And I'm fine. Like I'm fine um, meeting monthly. Um, that we we and especially to start getting more and more information in. It's like, what do we do with that information so we can actually use this time to like discuss next steps or what can we bring to the full body um just to move some things along but i'm definitely open to all these dates except for yeah december <laughs> yep. yep and this Shayla. location sorry jill had her hand raised I'm sorry jill no i just lowered it because patrice i think you pointed out what what I was going to say, and that was um, one of them was, you know, yeah, it has been a long time since you all met because the whole point was there was nowhere to house the data. So you were getting the data and there was nothing to do with the data at that point in time. And I'm, I'm hopeful we're going to move that conversation forward. Um, you know, I, I have had conversations with other supervisorial staff to kind of point out data is great, but until we have a place to analyze it. Um, it really doesn't do us any good. And we do have agreement to get more data. I mean, the sheriff's provided data, the LEA has all said that they'll provide data. So I think it's super important, but I just hate to see you guys sit here month after month and say, okay, great, we've got data, now what? <laughs> That's how we got frustrated last year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing too is um, you all may know that um, we received federal funding to launch the strategies for youth training for law enforcement um, agencies. Um, that all kind of came out of this subcommittee actually. So we'll be happy as another um, agenda item. I have to check in with you, Chris, about timing that, um, but to at least provide an update and a presentation on, uh, on that and the process will actually be in late September, we'll be making a presentation to um, Police Chiefs uh, Association, the Chiefs Association, uh, to start the kind of recruitment process of getting um, departments engaged and hopefully having them sign up to participate. So we can bring some of the updates back to the body as well. Uh, the other thing, Patrice, I, I would point out also is with the familiar faces, there's a the potential that you know, we're really going to see some great data between health and probation. Um, super excited about that. So that's a potential in the near future as well. And uh, again, we'll open it up for any additional public comment. Make sure I don't miss anybody. Yeah, see your hand. I just wanted to thank you all for letting me be here and do public comment earlier. My first time and I was very informational meeting. And um, now that I know that this group reviews this report, uh, my question to the group would probably just be if you're allowed to comment back, when's the next time you would review this um, oversight of the sheriff report so that more community members could come? The report, right? So. Yeah. So I'm sure timing wise, because this is of interest to the entire body, the entire racial justice oversight body. And I think we were trying to originally trying to schedule a review and initial mm -hmm. report based on what committee was meeting kind of first. Um, and so the community engagement funding committee met and and so they looked over the report and then like like Chris mentioned, then pass it over to the data subcommittee. So I think it will be based on the timing of when the next presentation will be conducted um, by the sheriff to the board of supervisors, um, where we will likely want to review, especially if it's going to incorporate some of these additional data points. Stay tuned, Addie. <laughs> 
Thank you. Like you said, we'll be discussing it at the full body, racial justice oversight body, to see which um, requests we want to put forward. Mm -hmm. It'll be a discussion there. And it's always you know, open to public, so community uh, members can definitely join and give public comment there as well. Yeah. And that meeting is September 21st, Addie. Uh, what was the, the name of that committee? The full body, the full racial justice oversight body. So today okay. you're at the committee of that full body and that that one will be um, the next meeting for the full body will be on uh, September 21st from one to four. Thank you. Cool. So any other comments? Only comment I have is it's so good to see everybody in person and have a meeting <laughs> um, again now in person. This is my first subcommittee meeting that I'm part of, of, of our job in person. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was great. Really nice. yeah. Thanks for having us. Yeah. So, well, if there's nothing else, we will go ahead and adjourn and our next meeting will be September 28th from 3 to 5. Same location, or we'll same do. time, same, same place. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.